when people would be interested in uh, finding or not finding yourself on the internet. Um, not finding. <laughs> not finding yourself, there we go. Not finding. Well, uh, thanks for, for your interest in PodCamp this year. We have a pretty big crowd in general. But pretty much what this is, um, my day job, I actually work with Carol. And it's the oh, first one. I work as a paralegal, uh, my day job. And my job is to find defendants in order to serve them with legal papers. So this is pretty much what I do. Um, my information, given the knowledge that I have, I try to keep my information relatively limited. But there are places where you can, come on in. Sorry. Um, there's a stool here, there's a seat in the back. <laughs> um, so, I was kind of talking with some people, and that would be a really cool thing for PodCamp because the internet, much like Mr. Peduto commented in the keynote, you can find anything available on the internet, and finding people is, is one of those things that's relatively simple and easy to do. Um, normally, whenever I'm starting out with stuff, uh, when my boss tells me we lost this, this defendant, I need you to find them. Uh, my very first place to do is Google. So. Chris Brogan, the founder of PodCamp. He's going to be very easy. Yeah, it's pretty easy guy to find put it in Google. So we're going to see what comes up. Who are we looking up? Chris Brogan, the founder of PodCamp. So we've been over here. We get Chris Brogan, which automatically takes us to chrisbrogan.com. We have chrisbrogan.com, twitter.com, chrisbrogan, about. So if I'm actually looking for information on Chris Brogan, we're going to check out and see what his actual personal website tells us. And he, of course, has a contact link. Now, his contact is pretty well, you know, it's, it's one of the forms. Now, if you're looking to not have your address information out there, this is a really good way to do it because instead of saying this is how you can contact me, you do a basic form that says contact me, but I'm not going to actually advertise my information. Um, a, a lot of people are doing this, and it, it just makes things a little bit easier. What did you just say? I'm not going to what? I'm sorry. You, what did you just say? Um, you can contact me, but you can contact me, but my personal information is not out there. With with this form that Chris oh, has up here on the site. You have to fill in your name, your email address. He asks for a reason as to why you're contacting him. So he can figure out, do I really want to talk to this person? Now, Chris is pretty good about getting back in touch with people and contacting people if they do reach him. Come on in, we have a stool. <laughs> um, so, what was that? One of the things is I want to give Chris a bag of money. <laughs> Chris Brogan is a jokester. He has one of those great sense of humor personalities. And absolutely, I'm sure that if you checked that, he would be calling you. He would be trying to find you. Um, so this is this is one of the ways that you can kind of protect yourself with, with that sort of stuff. If you do have a website, if you do have information that you need people to contact you, but you don't necessarily <coughs> want them knowing how to. Get, you don't want them showing up at your front door, in essence. Um, now, on the other hand. We are going to do a Google search for Mike Sorda. I'm going to pick on him because I'm married to him and allowed to. Um, Sorgatron.com, his blog. Uh, Mike Sorg SRA, that's not him. I know that. Anybody looking for him wouldn't necessarily know that. So again, if you have a popular name, that tends to make things a little bit easier because depending if somebody else is more searched than you are, they will come up first to search results. Portfolio for Michael Sork. Now, this is his actual portfolio website. And he does a lot of different stuff, but he also wants people to get in touch with him. Let's see if he changed this. Okay, he's got his phone number on there. Now, phone number may not seem like much, especially with cell phones because cell phones aren't registered like regular landline telephones to a specific location. The cell phone, on the other hand, if I'm looking for a defendant, what I will do is I will 
okay, I found a cell phone. I have a couple of different options. I can either call it, which tends to get into the legal ethics gray area. I prefer not to do that. So what I'll do instead is we will go back to Google and we will Google the cell phone number. Do you mind if I put this up here? I'm not getting any, I'm not getting oh, calling it back there. Oh, it's fine. I'm sorry. Uh, keep in mind also that Vivo is also doing these sessions. So mm -hmm. if, if you can't hear me if, if, on your recording stuff, the session will be available. Um, <laughs> my husband Mike is actually also recording it. He told me I had to push the record button before we started. <laughs> so he's going to be putting the session up online at some point in time. Um, so what I've done here is, Search. 
35 F, F, and I think it was 105 is what we determined. Now, I was correct. This comes up City Mortgage Inc. That tells me that the house was foreclosed and the bank now actually owns, owns this property. It is a bank property. What I would be able to do then is if my accident happened before City, uh, before City Mortgage took over onto it, I can go into the previous owner's information. City Mortgage owns this property as of December 17th of 2008. So if my accident happened after that date, great, I've got the right property. If it happened prior to that, Maria R. Salazar was the owner at that point in time. So I would then go back into Google and see if I could find something for Maria R. Salazar, or I would be able to be actually go to the actual deed, recorder of deeds website, and you can pay for that information, you can sign up for a login, pay with credit card, and you can actually pull up the actual deed information that gives you stuff to go from with that. Um, a lot of times that'll give at least a previous address, perhaps a maiden name, you know, that sort of stuff. So, I mean, this is information that is really out there that you may not necessarily think about, but it's amazing as to how easily I was able to find some of this information. Again, it's a matter of knowing what you're looking for and knowing where to look for it. Um, another fun thing that that works that's really easy to get to is 411.com. 411.com, 411 is obviously telephone address information. So we're going to look for John Smith, Pittsburgh 1522. We're going to search that. We're going to skip the search results. Okay, there are two results that are coming up listed for the phone listings, which is pretty cool. Um, so I check the camera. The broadcast isn't working. Oh, okay. Did you happen to close anything when you came in? I turned things on when I came in. Okay. Um, do you want me to restart it or do you not care if it's on the internet? <laughs> We're recording it, so we can provide it later. Okay, Thanks. that's fine. Thanks, sorry about that. <laughs> All right, the other feed that we're getting from the other camera will be the actual feed. <laughs> Sorry about that, guys. Um, yeah. Okay, so we have John Case and we have Johnny Smith. If I happen to know what general area, you know, if, if somebody comes to me and says, he lives on Taylor Avenue, but I don't know what the number is. Okay, I have John Case Smith at 308 North Taylor Avenue. Mr. Smith's phone number is obviously listed there. I can do a couple of other searches to kind of corroborate that information. But usually the telephone listings are, are pretty accurate within approximately six months or so. Um, so yeah, there's, again, that, that information that's, that's easily, readily available for free on the internet. Uh, generally what I, I do, my husband and I are actually unlisted because we don't want people to be able to look this information up and find us. Um, when I do a Google search for John Smith in Pittsburgh, it's going to give me 40 bazillion different search results. But if I narrow it down to a, a less common name, um, it's John Dinkeldorf. If I plug in John Dinkeldorf, that's going to give me a completely different, you know, that's going to very narrow it down. It's going to be very limited. Um, another search that I use is zapsearch.com. What I can zabasearch.com. What this allows me to do is again I can put in John Doe and I can limit it by state. Now, the thing that I don't like about this site is that I can't limit it by city, so I can't search it simply by Pittsburgh. If I put in John Smith for this, it's going to give me back too many results. If I put in something more specific, um, Chris Brogan. Poor Chris. This is the way it gets rough being here this year. There are seven listings that they have for Chris Brogan. 37 Milliard, 37 Milliard, <coughs> 6 Davis Court, 87 Mount Vernon Street. Um, 
they're, they're your six addresses that they give. Again, if I have specific information, uh, some of these also list phone numbers. So if I would happen to have a home phone number for Chris Brogan, I could always kind of cross-reference and double-check that by that information and be able to narrow down this is who I'm looking for. Um, other than that, I stumbled upon this interesting site. This was actually a, a recent stumble upon uh, within the last few weeks. And it was pretty much a Google search that I plugged in somebody's name in Google. I was trying to find them. And one of the links that they gave me in Google linked me back to this site. So we're again going to pick on my husband. Okay. Bunch of different people come up with this as far as that's concerned. It goes from Facebook, MySpace, um, Bing, different things like that. Um, MikeSorg at gmail.com, this very first email address they pull up. Yeah, that's my husband's email address. <laughs> so that's really easy to find in there. Um, you have Intellius searches over here. Now, this is one of the paid search sites, but they do give you free information on that. I tend to find that the Intellius stuff tends to be a little bit outdated, so if you find stuff on Intellius, it's, it's usually a couple of years old. They make you pay for it, and it's still a couple of years old. But um, just to kind of show you, this, this is all free websites that I've been using to find people. And it gives me phone numbers, it gives me addresses, it gives me information that I can glean in order to find you, <laughs> in, in essence, online. Um, so what can people do to kind of prevent this? Um, Don't get any trouble. Actually, <laughs> that, that brings me to another interesting website. <laughs> I was going to kind of not say that. <laughs> but, um, not by your house in Allegheny County, but I'm sure. <laughs> well, we got a lot of other counties that are all over the United States that have websites that are similar. Yeah, and everybody does. It seems like it's always the assessor site you go to first for those parcels. Yes. And in the counties that don't have internet access, uh, I deal with counties all throughout Pennsylvania. Um, Berks County, for instance, I just had to deal with. Their records aren't searchable online, but all it is is the phone call to the, usually it's the tax office, the tax assessment office. If they can give me the information, they have, it's free information. They provide it if it's asked. So if I call them up and say I need to find the property owner for 123 Main Street, they look it up in their system, they give me the name, I ask them I need a mailing address for this person because if it's a rental property and the person doesn't necessarily live there, they have to have the mailing address for the tax bill. So they'll give me the mailing address that it goes to if I ask for it. Now if that's not information they specifically give, I have to ask <coughs> for it, but it's readily available. Hi, Missy. Hi. <laughs> Lots of photo ops this, this is my gun. Um, so, yeah, that, that stuff is again readily available. Now, this is another website that I primarily use. Now, this is the Magisterial District Court's doc sheets. This is not a website that just anybody has. I mean, it's out there if you search for it. If you do a Google search for Magisterial District Court's doc sheets in Pennsylvania, <laughs> it will link you to this site. Um, it's a free site. <laughs> I don't have to log in anywhere. I don't have to register anywhere. But we'll see what we can find. Um, I generally drop it down to participant name. What's the site again? What's the URL? I can't read it. Oh, um, it's u at u j s portal dot p a courts dot u s. Thank you. Oh, you guys are all serious about this. <laughs> I'm going home locking down my information. <laughs> so are we. <laughs> I've done this before too. It's like, wait, 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 what are my friends going to do? My neighbors. <laughs> yeah. So, participant name is what I usually go by. So I, I normally have, my, my situations usually arise from auto accidents, personal injuries, slip and fall type of stuff. Yeah, I work for ambulance chasers. But, um, <laughs> What I, I'm given a police report with a name, 
Now, the accident happened two years ago. People move a lot within two years. So what I try to do is I generally take three or four sources, but if available, before I determine where I'm going to be sending this paperwork out for service. So I'll use three or four of these different sites, and if they all point me in the same direction, I'm in a pretty good direction that I know who I'm looking for. Um, so we're going to go ahead and search John Smith again, for John Smith. Now, with this search, we do have to put in the combination of down below. So we're going to put Allegheny County. And we're going to search that. And we're going to get tons of hits. <coughs> yeah, it's been a while. Um, what this will do is it provides additional information. Now, this site pretty much tells you don't get a parking ticket, don't get a speeding ticket, because you'll show up on here. Don't! I'm going to get for volunteers from the audience. Wow. Parking ticket here. This isn't good. Um, Other 
you know, pay for sites that, that you can use. You can also hire an investigator, obviously, and they'll have access to additional records. Um, the other, <laughs> kind of in the vein of this, one of the other sites that I definitely use. Just saying the information 
this is what they do. Now, the other comment was that uh, MySpace is kind of the trashy site. Yeah, trashy people don't care about protecting their information. <laughs> I, like I, I like trashy people. It's not just that, it's the kids You're, I worry about. I mean, that's crazy. I mean, you're, you're looking for low lowlifes, it sounds like. And I'm usually going on LinkedIn and Zoom info, Zoom internet. And LinkedIn is, Plaxo LinkedIn is on my list over here. Yeah. But again, that's not what I do on my day to day. But LinkedIn is another helpful resource. And the other nice thing about LinkedIn is that if I know I'm on LinkedIn and I'm not LinkedIn with you. Right. So yeah. if you're a friend of a friend of mine, I can see you on their LinkedIn. But LinkedIn, I generally have to have an introduction through somebody that a, a mutual friend. Um, that way, you know that I'm not just some random person trying to contact you. And you can then approve whether or not you want to have that connection with me. So that's again one of the one of the safer aspects of it. Plaxo I've been a little bit with, but I'm not entirely familiar with. But it, my understanding is it's along the same lines as as LinkedIn. That the information is out there for business professionals. The other one's really good is, is Zoom. Zoom Zoom actually goes out and web crawls your name throughout the world without your permission. And uh, you go on, you'll find somebody on, and, and it will pull up all the web tips. Zoom, zoom, zoom info. Or, yeah. It's often wrong. It's often wrong, yeah. Because I'm an architect. Yeah. So. It's often <laughs> wrong. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, I feel very much more important when I look at it. Well, and that again goes back yeah. to when, when I'm looking at the information, and you know, as people are looking at the information, the biggest thing they need to know is how to utilize the information. Because, okay, I can find information on how to, I can't believe I'm going to say this, how to build a bomb on the internet. It doesn't mean that A, I'm going to download that information. It doesn't mean B, that I'm actually going to use that information. C, it doesn't mean that I'm going to get it right. And, and, and D, that information may be posted there by the FBI with the intent of trying to get you to download it so they can arrest you. Exactly. <laughs> so, I mean, the, the key to, is, is that, I mean, obviously if people have seen how easy it is for me to, to find other people. Set your settings, if you don't want people finding you, set your settings on your Facebook, on your MySpace, on your Twitter. You should probably brought up that Facebook security is actually horrible. I got a friend who does security and he found important vulnerabilities to get everything and get your settings turned up high. Really? And they use like Caesar ciphers on passwords, which are like, you know, 26 different combinations that you It's very easy to So, we wouldn't put any information on Facebook. That's reassuring as well. Yeah. I'll say that. My boyfriend's mother is not connected to me in any way on Facebook. I've never contacted her. It means so I've never uploaded my contact book into Facebook. But from my Gmail, it knows that I contact her and suggest her as someone in my network. Yeah. While I have those settings actually set to not find that information. Yeah, and I understand that these companies are trying to make it easier for you. But again, I don't necessarily want that information out there. So. My profile pictures on MySpace and Facebook are like from 10 years ago. I don't have any recent pictures for a few different reasons, but one of them being, if people are trying to find me, like my, my current coworkers at, at my regular office, I don't want them necessarily following me on Twitter or Facebook because I sometimes bitch about work. <laughs> you know, so I don't want them going, oh my god, she got that at me, oh whatever. Yeah, so I, I don't put that information out there. If they look at that and they see the old picture of me, okay, I've gained a lot of weight, I've cut my hair, I have glasses now. You know, so they don't necessarily equate that to being me. One solution I know from friends who've done for that is they have two different accounts. One that's like for some initial last name, that's their sort of work account yeah. on Twitter. And, and they'll talk to work people and treat with work people. And then it's totally different account that is just for friends, it's just personal, it's locked, it's, you know. Yeah, and that, that is, a, a lot of people do that. I, I know myself, people who do that. My confusion with that, and that's actually what happened with Jane Pitt, is that before she came out as to who she was, she either did a Facebook update or a Twitter update from the wrong account, was afraid that somebody was going to find out who she was, and mass hysteria hit it as far as she was concerned. So you do have that option, but it is something that you need to be 
consciously aware of. Um, I actually had a Twitter account set up for my dog and my cat, and I, my, my dog tweeted for my cat the other day. <laughs> oh, how you? My, my cat generally tweets in law cat speak, and my dog does My dog just tweets in regular language, and Samson, my cat, actually tweeted in regular language instead of law cat. So it was just kind of one of those things that you, you need to be to be aware of that that's something you should do. But, um, I mean, some of, some of the sites that I brought up, obviously, you really don't have a lot of control over. When I brought up my property information, when my husband and I bought our property, or bought our house, that information has to be done with your legal name. You obviously can't use a nickname, you can't use a pseudonym as far as that's concerned. But know, again, that that information is that readily available to people who are looking for it. How do we just silently give that rights to everybody in America? That is something governmentally wide because even before this information is available online, I could go down to the reporter leads and I could actually go through their deed books and, and search I, it. And I'm okay with that because most people and don't put the effort out. To the do free, that. I think it's the Freedom of Information Act. You know that this information is readily available to anybody who asks for it, and they have these. It's part of. Our, Living in a free country, uh, and this is my own personal thought on it. This is not, you know, reflective of anything with anybody else, such as a podcast or anybody else that I know. But <coughs> my own personal thought on it is, when everything, the United States is about freedom, freedom of speech, freedom of thought, freedom of expression, freedom of whatever. And within that, freedoms is if I want to find out information about your property, okay. I have complaints to make about you because you don't mow your lawn, your dog barks all night or whatever. I don't know who you are, but I know where you live. I will go and check this out. If there's a vacant lot on my block that I would like to purchase, you know, I can go and I can find out this information. Um, more specifically, they use it in title history type stuff. And if you're buying a house, they do a title record search to make sure that there's no liens against the house, there's no assets against the house, and different things like that in order to make that information available. They've taken one step further, like you said, nine times out of ten, people aren't going to want to go actually down to, because it's limited to business hours, it's limited to you actually have to go in, you have to sign in, you have to do all this other stuff for to actually view this information. Now, I can pull this information up at midnight on a Sunday if I want to. So I, I think that would be something that you would need to discuss more specifically with your local county officials as to, I don't want the information available. Yes? Yes. Hi. Um, Natalia Rudick. Actually, I think um, you will probably be my constituent starting in January. I saw the address uh, of Alaska. Oh. Yes. 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 It's cool. It's cool. <laughs> um, I know. I was going to tell you. Um, so yeah, I, I actually have used a lot of these tools sort of as a citizen activist to try to find out who owns that house and how to I own the house. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, but it, it's, it's really interesting. Um, and actually, one of the, the strange things about becoming a public official, um, when I was working with my campaign strategist, he said, you're the first candidate I've ever worked with who's had a Facebook account before they actually became a candidate. So, I, I, you know, it's... it's <laughs> It's true, and it's sort of like, okay, well, how do I want to shave my online persona but still be myself? I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a really strange personal transition that I had to make. Um, but also, um, what's really interesting, just speaking about that docket, um, I was talking to my district magistrate about that, and actually, there are about 40,000 outstanding like parking tickets yeah. um, in, 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 the, in Pittsburgh since 2004. So actually, they put the, this, this all came together in the state um, in the spring, and they had about like 30 to 40 days or something where everybody could go and look and see if they had anything outstanding. Um, and, uh, you know, they sort of, not necessarily amnesty, but say, okay, if you got a parking ticket or something that you never paid in, in Berks County or something and they can never find you, they had a period of 30 to 40 days where you could pay. I think they had a 25% success rate. But um, what's interesting is that all goes into a national database. So if someone gets caught in Arizona, yeah. They can actually go on the site and look up the information and say, oh, they have an outstanding warrant for, for, whatever. Um, so, so it's putting out, it's it's putting it's it out putting nationally. Out more so yeah, so it's putting it, putting it out nationally. And then what's interesting about the assessment site, um, I remember when they took down the names, and one of the reasons for that actually came up because there were some judges and police officers 
who said that they didn't want their names online because they thought that they might get retaliation for, for various things. Thank you for that. Um, I didn't know Yeah, and it's really interesting because I think in the community development and sort of community activism world, like we were sort of, you know, had mixed feelings about it because it is always, it, it's always helpful to be able to, um, you know, look, look something up by name. And so if you have a slum landlord, for example, you could look it up and see how many other properties they own in the neighborhood. So um, there's one property owner in my neighborhood that, that owns big, big patches of land, but it's really hard to tell what exactly they own. Um, and there are other ways of, of doing it. Um, but, but what's interesting is that you could, and I've done this before, I mean, you could look someone's name up on, on one of these sites or on the white pages even, and then just go to Google and just do a street view. So it's still there. Like you can actually still directly see the house that you live in, and it's even creepier because if you happen to be outside when they were doing the picture, they have you mowing the lawn, or they have you walking the dog, or yeah. whatever. Um, so, <laughs> exactly. so I've done that before. So there's actually been some discussion about maybe trying to put in the name function back, for, but or maybe having it under actually, some sort of like yeah. There is a pay site. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, that yeah. Pay to get the names. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. And it's not really important to buy unless you're a real estate professional. Well, that's the thing is sometimes sometimes I do use those sites in my professional work. If I can't find somebody, if they've flown that far below the radar, I will actually do that. If that doesn't predict your results, yeah. I hire an investigator who has additional resources and databases they can search. Well, I was thinking, if you're willing to pay mm -hmm. right amount of money, but like people the, can't all of these sites that I did, well. these are free. Yeah. But this this information never goes away, right? So. No. <laughs> I will tell you, I, I am a real estate agent, so when I first started, you could look up properties by people's names, yeah. which was to me the creepiest thing in the world, <laughs> because oh, yeah. Yeah. I, I want my name to be able to be found, so someone could have typed my name in, mm -hmm. found my address, yep. and known where I work, what my phone number is, like, exactly. way too much information. And my there. problem as far as that was concerned, and it's a double-edged sword for me, I'm trying to find this you know, right. hit and run drivers. I'm trying to find people who've caused injury to other people. So having that information like that was good for me in that sense, but in the same sense, I'm thinking, oh my God, somebody could be doing the same thing to me right now in a different <laughs> location. This is crazy. When, really, when you're really visible online, like if somebody is working with me and they're like, oh, well, gee, I want to see where Eric Martin lives. Mm -hmm. You just type in my name and there's my address. And it's like, oh. that's kind of creepy. Yeah, that is. Yeah, that is creepy. So I'm glad it's gone. Yes. I came across something interesting a couple years ago. I used to work for West County, and I found out all this stuff that online. Oh, yeah, they have a lot of this online. You can look up marriage. Like, <laughs> yes. Yeah. So I was like, oh, I'll search for my parents. Um, found out that my dad was married to a woman that was married to the same person. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
for the most part. Um, so those are some type of precautions that you can take. And you know, if, if it is a situation, unfortunately, that you're concerned about, you may not need, you may not be able to use that feature. Um, unfortunately, that's the important part of it. Or maybe you can contact them and ask them specifically. I want this information out there. Here it in a story. How can you make this happen? Um, did you mention the way that was shit? That's that one. Oh, I love that story. Oh, that is weird. Yeah. Didn't mention that. Yeah, that's going to be a huge problem. Even if you take it down, archive.org has it backed up. No, not a resource for like that. Or yeah, even if you do a blog, I'm not sure how to check out more time. They may have, yeah, because I did check. I did well, I know that, I was going to say about the uh, girl, I know it was selling my Google Reader. Yeah, Google like, yeah, Reader, everybody was saying, like, saying like, they didn't want to close out <laughs> like, their Google Reader because of that. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, it's, it's crazy that once it's out there, it's literally out there. Yeah. Even in, like, blacklists for media marketers, mm -hmm. spam mailers, your information exists, your address exists, if you've ever gotten mail, the mail can look you up based on trying to get letters to you. Yeah. Um, I found, I can't remember what side it was, I would pull it up. I found, a, I was at this location for like two months. I, I was staying at this place. I was getting mail at this place for two months. They had that address information as one of my address histories. I never changed my driver's license information over since it was such a short period of time I was going to be there. It was just weird. And then if you leave it all for credit history or a background check, that can exactly. be in trouble if they find it. Alright, well thank you all again for your